Welcome. All right. Well, hey, everybody. It's Grim Green from GrimGreen.com back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again here on Wild Card Wednesday. What we're going to be talking about today is this tank right here. This is the new Smoke Tech TFV8 tank. This is their cloud chasing sub ohm tank that also comes with an RTA base, which is what we're going to be rebuilding today. Before we get too far into this video, I have to remind everybody that yes, the FDA is currently trying to take away and limit your access to life-saving vapor products. So do everything you can, get involved, visit august8th.org, follow CASA, follow the calls, those calls to actions, follow not blowing smoke, call your representatives, ask them to support and co-sponsor HR 2058 as well as the Cole Bishop Amendment because unless we can change this law, everything I'm about to talk about won't matter anyway. So yeah, Smoke Tech TFV8. Like I said before, this is their big cloud chasing tank, RTA sub ohm tank. In order to get to know it just a little bit better, as well as that RTA deck, what we're gonna do is go up close, as we always do. Yeah, quick short up and closey time. <clears throat> all right, yeehaw. Well, all these pieces down here represent the Smoke Tech TFV8. Now, I made no apologies at all for my dislike of the TFV4. I just didn't get along with that tank very well. It constantly, constantly was leaking on me. It was constantly gurgly on me. Thankfully, the TFV8 has been much, much better. The first thing I want to look at, move all this to the side. We're going to take a look at this coil head. Now, look at the size of this coil head. This is gigantic. This is a very, very large coil head and it takes up a lot of real estate inside the tank. So we screw this into the base. Now this is already a used coil head that I'm not gonna be using again. I'm actually gonna be using the RTA base, but I just wanted to show you exactly how much real estate this takes up inside the tank. You attach your glass like that. You grab your chimney like this. It's gonna screw together, screws all together like that. Adjustable airflow on the bottom. It doesn't really lock into any position. It kind of just kind of spins randomly and free Thankfully, I always leave mine either at full open or uh, at about halfway. It takes a little bit of pressure to turn, so if you leave it in this position, chances are it'll stay in that position even though it doesn't necessarily click into any position. Filling it up is pretty easy. If you look on the top, it says open and then there's a dot right here and this dot represents the hinge. So you kind of press down a little bit and you pop it open like this and you have a big sort of, you know, silicone kidney shaped juice fill hole there. And you kind of have to be a little bit careful because juice needs to go in this hole and as well as out of this hole. So you blah, you fill up your juice, you swing this back, you put it all back together, you got your big old drip tip and boom, you'll just be, I mean, clouds bro clouds for days. Let's take a look at that 510 pin. That is a very, very protruding, very, very solid static feeling 510 pin. There's no real reason to run this Smoke Tech TFV8 on any sort of hybrid mod, but if you absolutely had no choice, you could probably get away with it and be just fine. But I'm going to take this all back apart because what I want to focus on today is the RTA base. Get you out of here. So this is the RTA base, which is just about the same size as one of those coil heads. I'm going to unscrew this here. Thankfully, it's a two-piece design. And these are the coils they put in here. And you know what? They don't look amazing, but they don't look awful either. I'm going to try to glow and pulse these and get them going as, as well as I possibly can. I can see the way that you wick this as the wick goes in, then it kind of just folds down into here. A lot like those really good sense, uh, you know, Heracles RTA, uh, you know, RTA bases. They had the wicks that go in and down, so you're not trying to tuck it in and have it be in the front here. You, tick, you tuck it in and it's in the side and it's also a little face. It'll make a lot more sense once I start wicking it, but first of all, I need to get these coils glowing. Well, I'll be damned. They're actually glowing pretty evenly. I'm not even sure what kind of coils those are. They look like very loosely wrapped Claptons or maybe some sort of staple coil going on there. I really have no idea, but you know what? They're registering at about 0.3 ohms. They're glowing evenly. So what I'm going to do is wick this real fast. We're going to juice it, wick it, get back out to normal view and vape it. So I got it wicked with some cotton bacon version two. And what I'm going to do is just press the scissors up against the base here and kind of give these a bit of a trim both sides right against the base there not up higher down lower right against this base and then what's great about this rta base is i've already done it on the other side you can kind of see they just get tucked in you just you just tuck them in there's no real science or rhyme or reason you just grab your wicks with a flathead screwdriver and you tuck them down just tuck them down right in there because your juice is going to flow into here that's where your wicks are 
Wix on both sides. It's great. That was really super great, super fast, fun, yeah, easy, yeah. So I got them all nice and juiced up, and as with any other RTA, before you fill up the tank, you want to make sure that they're nice and wet and producing the vapors. Then the chimney gets screwed on just like this. It's in there nice and snug, and then you can actually leave this all together, put your tank together all in one piece. Oh man, it's so fast, it's so easy, and it's all put together right now. All that's left to fill it. So you look on top, you look for this hinge, you go to the other side, you boop, pop this open, and you bleh your juice through that hole. Bleh. Now the TFVA doesn't have the cleanliness, you know, cleanest top fill system. There's always some residual juice. You have to be really careful. There's not a lot of room in here. You have to really make sure your juice goes in one side and the air comes out the other. It's really easy to stick your nozzle in there and just squeeze it and it will overflow in a heartbeat because, yeah, there's no air getting anywhere. Air needs to come out in order for juice to get in. So, we got it full. Let's close this off. We attach our giant drip tip wherever that freaking thing went and then uh, now, yes, let's get back out to normal view. Let's vape it. Finally! The TFV8 has just a mountain of airflow. It has more airflow than you would ever need. It has like dripper status airflow. What I do is I close the airflow off about halfway. I feel like I get a much more flavorful vape that way. The flavor on it, even at its best, isn't amazing. It is highly decent. If I had to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, which I don't have to do, but I will anyway, it's probably like a five and a half. You can taste it. You'll be able to taste your juice. It just doesn't have that like pungent, intense flavor that I can get out of some RDAs and some other RTAs. Performance wise though, there's no comparison. This is probably easily the highest performing sub-ohm tank Bah, that I've ever used. Now this doesn't have a coil head in it right now. This is that RTA base that you just saw in the uppy closey portion, but even with it, I haven't got any wicking or any wicking. What? I haven't got any leaking, any gurgling, any flooding, any dry hits, anything, anything. It's just been a very nice, smooth, consistent, saturated vape. Occasionally, not often, but occasionally, this combination of the RTA base and the SmokeTech TFV8 will throw me a check atomizer on every device I put it on. I put it on multiple DNA 200s, check atomizer. Put it on the Segeli 213, check atomizer. Put it on that iPower, check atomizer. Not quite, pardon me, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. All I ever do is I unscrew it, I make sure the tank is nice and cinched down together, I screw it back down, and then it suddenly starts working again. Anyway, that was a 0.3 ohm dual fuse Clapton it looked like. I have it set to 86 watts. It could definitely handle more wattage than any tank in existence, but right now I have it set at a moderate 86.7 watts. Like I said, the performance on this, yeah, for a sub-ohm tank, it is ridiculous. The sub-ohm coil heads, they've lasted, bah, okay. I put about, I don't know, 60, 70 mils of juice through that first coil head, and it just kept going. Like, I feel like I probably could have put another 30 mils of juice through that coil head. It leaked on me once and only once. Since that one time it leaked, it has not leaked since. I don't know what caused that initial leak, but it did happen. Some juice poured out of the airflow hole. Since I've used it with the RTA base, no leaking, no gurgling, no flooding, and certainly no dry hits. It's just been pure, pure performance. If you are a cloud chasing type of person, I don't see how you could go wrong with the TFV8. Are you gonna need your vape budget hands for it? Eh, 35 bucks. Sure, I don't know. It says $35.99 to $36.99. I don't know what those, I guess the stainless steel is $35.99 and the black is $36.99. So you're paying an extra buck for the black. This came to me via Origin Vape. I'll be linking down to them in the description. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't really think of anything else to say. Let's play the Aliens game. Aliens game, FDA, they're coming. They've taken all of my vape gear. Is the TFV8 something I would seek out and buy? 
eh, it's not really at the top of my list. I could think of a couple of other sub-ohm tanks that I'd rather have, as well as another couple RTAs that I would rather have. And I know everyone's going to ask me, well, what would you choose before that? I will tell you. As far as RTAs go, I would definitely choose the Zephyrus version 2. I would definitely choose the Goblin Mini version 2. And I would definitely choose that new Coil Art Mage tank that we talked about earlier this week. If we're going for strictly sub-ohm tanks, I really, really like that V-God Trick tank. I really, really like like that E-Leaf Milo tank. I really like the Sense coil heads like the Heracles and the Heracles Plus. And I also really like the new iJust S tank that comes on the iJust S device. I know it's not about this, but hell, I'm throwing in this video anyway. Super good vape. But if we're talking about pure, like pure cloud chasing performance with enough airflow to just knock over a tree like a hurricane. I don't know where I'm going with this analogy. The TFV8 is at the top of the list for a lot of people. It is a pure cloud chasing tank and I'm gonna wrap this up before I get too rambly. If you're into cloud chasing, you definitely owe it to yourself to check out the TFV8 from Smoke. I didn't get along with the TFV4. I didn't really like it at all. And I haven't liked a lot of the Smoke Tech tanks that have come out like the TFV4 Mini and then the TFV4 Micro that you could convert into a Mini. Uh, I just, I didn't like all of those, but the TFV8, it feels like a brand new fresh product. It seems like they did their homework and overall, it's just a much better tank in my opinion right here. So anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up like I said before I get too rambly. Don't forget to fight for your vaping rights. You don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. I'll post some links down in the description to where you can check this out if you're interested. But yeah, that's what I got everybody. And as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping. That's enough. Three, two, one. One, two, three, four. The capital.